Hey everyone, Caroline Roberts here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be sharing another episode of my new series called Stories for His Glory. So if you're interested in watching more, then definitely stay tuned. So today we're going to be interviewing Elia Ibrito, the author of The Burden of a Man. Elia Ibrito is a licensed social worker, therapist, mentor, author, and wife to Joseph Brito. Elia is a Maryland native and first generation college graduate. She received her bachelor's degree from Bowie State University and her master's degree from the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Elia is passionate about encouraging and uplifting women who wear their past as shame and highlighting those who are often overlooked or feel unheard. Elia has walked alongside many women and young girls, helping them find their voice and heal from childhood wounds. With her transparency of personal experiences, Elia enjoys helping others reach their goals and most importantly, spreading the love of Christ. So we are excited to bring Elia on here. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, I'm the founder of a publishing company called Luminous Publishing, and she is one of our authors who recently published, and I can't wait for you guys to hear more about her story. Hey, sis. Hey, thank you for having me. It's definitely an honor to be here. How are you? I'm doing good. We're so excited to have you and talk about this amazing book. Let me show you all the burden of a man. And she just looks so beautiful slaying <laughs> on this cover with her and her hubby. And let's just hop right into this interview. I'm so excited about all the amazing nuggets that she's going to be sharing with us today. All right, so share with us, share with our audience, what made you come up with this title of this book? What does it mean? What is yeah. the burden of a man? Yeah, that is so crazy because I remember doing like my one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. Oh, it was way back. It had to be like 2014, 2015-ish. And that's when I had just met my husband um, in college. And we were not even seriously dating at the time. And I was just like, what is the burden of a man? So I was just writing. And that's the title that came to my uh, my mind. It's like, what does that mean? And the Lord told me very clearly because I was very spicy, still a little bit, but it's, I've toned it down. He said, um, he told me what the book was going to be about. And he's like, you can't, it's not about you being married. Because I said, I can't write this book about marriage and a man if I'm not married. He said, it's not about you being married. It's about your idea of submission that will hinder your walk down the aisle and hinder you being able to be in a successful marriage. And I was just like, oh, so you're coming for me in this book. Got it. But, you know, it's also <laughs> to minister to other people. <laughs> That's so good. I love that. So this idea of submission and girl, you said the S word because to a lot of people, submission is a bad word, right? So we're definitely going to dive deeper into that. And one of the interesting things that I read in your book and about your story is your first example of submission came from the movie Coming to America. So can you talk to us a little bit more about that and how submission looked for you growing up? Yes. Yeah, so growing up in seeing submission was like non-existent um especially when i saw that movie i was like mom why she's obeying everything that she he says she was like that's what submission is and i was just like well that's what submission is and i don't want it i don't want any part i want to have my own mind and be able to do what i want and as i got older and grew in my relationship with the lord i realized that what i did see in my environment was the opposite of submission mm -hmm. and this is not to downplay any women in my family because they're very powerful very dynamic women they taught me a lot and i love all of them but when it comes to a biblical standard of submission mm -hmm. in a godly marriage i can't allow that mindset to determine what i do within my marriage um, I saw a lot of, you know, different relationships happening. I didn't like that he did this. So I'll belittle him in public and all those things. And it's mm -hmm. just, that's not what the Lord wants us, how the Lord wants us to function in our marriages with our husband. Mm. And I love that you said biblical meaning of submission. And what I love about your book is it breaks down how submission looks biblically. But I feel like a lot of people have misconceptions and misunderstandings around this idea of submission. Um, can you maybe share with us what are some of like, or at least just one of those misconceptions that um, we have as women when we think of submission that makes us kind of shy away from that term and from that idea and how can we look at it a little bit differently? 
Yeah, I think one of the false perceptions is that we have to literally do every single thing our husband says and that we cannot have a mind of our own. And that's the complete opposite of biblical submission. Mm. Biblical submission involves submission on both par- for both parties and also honor, respect, service, selfishness, selfish, selflessness, and just making sure that we're putting God above our own feelings and honoring our husband or our, our wife as unto the Lord. And I think that the false idea of what submission is typically in the world is that I'm a doormat. If he says bow, I got to bow. If he says he wants his food at nine o'clock, I got to have it at nine o'clock on the dot. And that is not what biblical submission is. And Christ's relationship with us is a perfect example of that. So it's just like, yes. you know, this false perception, I feel bad. And, and it also breaks my heart about the false that, you know, the false perception that is in the world of submission, because it's like, if you only knew that it's not like that, if you only knew the level of freedom that you actually do have within your submission and in your marriage, you will be more open and willing to submit to your spouse. Amen, girl. You was preaching. <laughs> yes, Christ is our example of submission. So yes. um, who is like the target audience or who's the ideal reader for this book? Is it only for wives or do you feel like women who are single or just anyone can benefit and take away from this book? Yeah, I feel like anyone can benefit and take away from this book. And my husband actually did a chapter in the book from the man's perspective, which I thought was very powerful. And I was grateful that he agreed to it because he was just like, I don't know, but he did it. So I think anyone who can, that anyone can relate to it. And especially if you've had toxic, toxic relationships in the past, or if you're currently in a toxic relationship, or you grew up in an environment where you didn't see marriages or relationship or submission exampled in a positive way, this book is definitely for you. That's so good. And it's just so important seeing those things modeled before us. So kind of how you shared, like your only true example of submission was, you know, watching Coming to America, just giving you a glimpse of what submission may look like. But it's so important growing up as young girls, um, as believers, that we have women to pour into us, women as examples, like that Titus to women. And I'm just thinking of um, even just growing up in my life and my family and, you know, I love my family. The women in my family are strong, kind of like, you know, the same thing that you said, but I didn't grow up seeing a lot of examples of successful, healthy and thriving marriages. Right. So it's like, you know, divorce was a common thing or having children out of wedlock, not even getting married to start with, um, you know, those are things that kind of happen in my family. And. I made the decision. I said, God, I want to break this generational cycle in my family, in my life. And I want to set a new president and I want to have a successful marriage. I didn't see a model before me, but even just, you know, reading the word of God and seeing Christ as an example, right? Husbands love your wives as Christ loves the church. Wives respect your husbands. Um, Just seeing that example was so important for me so sometimes we feel like we don't have those examples but god didn't leave us hanging he left us with the word of god but one of the things that i love about in your book is just um that subject and that conversation of generational cycles generational curses and what that looks like and how you can break past those things so can you talk to us a little bit more about that for sure and growing up i didn't think that it was possible for me to have a successful relationship or have a successful marriage i mean just for example i would go for christmas events and my my aunt or my uncles would have a new significant other i'm just like well what happened to the last lady so or the last man so it's just like i thought that was normal like okay if someone doesn't do something that you like you don't work through it you just get rid of them and go Mm. to the next one and it's just like when you're married that's not an option Mm. (laughs) you can't do that you can't just throw away your spouse especially if you're within a, a godly marriage so just being in an environment seeing the opposite i always had like a deep desire to do to go against the grain and in this particular situation in my family going against the grain was doing the opposite of what i saw so i was determined to have a successful relationship i was determined to have a successful marriage but in order to see that or to obtain that unfortunately i had to pull from external examples so people that i may saw in my church that appeared that they had a good relationship and just try to get into relationship with them and get more wisdom and knowledge about okay what truly is a godly marriage how can i obtain this when i didn't come from this and knowing and believing and having enough faith that God will give me the desires of my heart to be able to be that example going forth in my family, whether they're older than me or my little cousins can look up to my marriage and be like, okay, that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to strive after. I want to be the example that I didn't have growing up. 
Amen. Amen. That's so good. And talking about, you know, those generational cycles that, you know, many of us go through and have to break that comes along with toxicity and toxic habits. So what tips can you give to a woman who finds herself um, just in a toxic relationship and how she can she heal to get more so in a healthy space for her um, mental health and for her relationship? Absolutely. And since I'm a therapist, I'm going to throw out an exercise for that. Yes. So I, I always tell my clients to list out the type of relationship or a lifestyle that they want to have a, in a positive way. And anything in their life that's currently the opposite of that, they have to get rid of it. And it's not easy. It's definitely not a smooth process and it's going to hurt. But that's how your healing starts, by getting rid of the things and uprooting the things that are hindering the life and the marriage and the relationship that you want for yourself. And sometimes because of what we come from, sometimes because of what we've been through, we want better, but we don't think that we can have that better. So I always say that it's important to submit that list to the Lord and allow him to show you, no, you deserve better and I can give you better. But you first have to let go of these things that's holding you back. So what is, give us a snippet of your story and how your story brings God glory, because this is Stories for His Glory. And in every episode, we end off with just, you know, honing it back into what is your story and um, how has God been getting the glory out of what you've been through, what you've walked through and being able to share that with the world. Absolutely. So I definitely don't come from a family that grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth. You know, you're, that's not unnormal or uncommon. Um, I didn't grow up in a single, I grew up in a single parent household. So my mom and my dad split and separated when I was about maybe six or seven or probably younger than that. And from that point on, me, my mom and my sister grew up in different homes. We grew up in homeless shelters, all these, the whole nine. And it was just uncomfortable. So everything that I saw would Everything that I saw made me believe that I would not achieve past what my environment showed me. And when I began to develop my own relationship with God, my, fresh, my freshman year of college, I was like, okay, so there is better, but how can I get better if I didn't come from better? Um, but as I started to read the word more and trust God more, he began to show me different aspects of my life, of my past, that would help um, where he's bringing me in the future. So how my toxic relationships will help bring people through when I, once I let go of them, once my, um, how I grew up and how that would just kind of break off the ideas that I have about marriage, the ideas I even had about being able to have a relationship with God. And cause I didn't think that was possible. I'm like, how do you talk to God? Like he's all the way up there. He can't hear us. So my perception of even having a relationship with God was completely off. So through my studying and him growing me in this, to write this book, he also revealed how a relationship with him is possible and how my relationship was skewed or my thoughts of a, of a relationship was skewed with him. Amen. Amen. I love that. That is so powerful. So if you guys haven't already, I want you to run to Amazon.com, Kindle, BarnesandNoble.com and support our sister. Check out Purchase the Burden of a Man. It's such an amazing and life changing book. Okay, check it out. And I also wanted to, um, before I have Aaliyah kind of share a little bit more about what she's working on and what she does, all those awesome things. Every time I wear this sweatshirt, you guys are always asking, where did you get that shirt from? Where can I check it out? She designed this, y'all. This is from her company, her clothing lines. So, Elia, can you share with us a little bit more about your, you know, your t-shirt line and everything else that you have going on? What are you working on and how we can support you? Absolutely. Thank you. So, my t-shirt line is called That Deep Apparel, which was also birthed during college years. I will always see apparel that didn't glorify God. And I said, oh, Lord, I want something cool and fancy and fun that people will want to wear that represents you. So even though it finally got birth after college, still my college friends still support it and all those things. So you will see it on some campuses, but it's called thatdeepapparel.com. And I'm also a licensed clinical therapist. So I have private practice and I'm also a school social worker. So if you need any mental health assistance on that aspect, um, if you need to change your perspective about mental health, especially in the black community, I am the girl, <laughs> you can go to um, transcendclinicalservices.com and that'll get you where you need to be when it comes to mental health, getting a session. If you need consultation, we have all that available to you. And I also have a website, which is my first and last name, eliabrittle.com. And then you'll see some new things 
coming. That way you can also go to the link for the book from that website as well. And I have a devotional that I'm working on that will be out next year. Yay, super exciting. Congratulations on everything that you are doing. Y'all support her, check her out. Um, all her links, as she said, are going to be in the description box. And thank you so much for joining us today, Elia, for Stories for His Glory. It has truly been a blessing having you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. And I hope you guys get something from this book and it blesses you in a mighty way. Yes. And if you guys enjoyed this video, um, make sure to like it. Make sure to subscribe. Do all that good stuff. And Stay tuned for more because we definitely have more episodes of Stories for His Glory coming up. <music>